Hello, everybody, and welcome to the esports.net Rocket League show. My name is Oliver Bass, joined alongside by none other than Pyro J. Today, talking about another team upcoming at this winter, excuse me, spring major. It is going to be Optic Gaming, one of the biggest teams in North America right now, one of the biggest teams in all of esports. Optic Gaming is a name that's been around for longer than I can even really remember. But the thing that makes these guys so unique is that it's more a comeback story. Usually, we're used to Optic being, you know, one of the best teams on the planet, one of the best teams in Valorant last year. This time, Optic kind of earned that reputation, Pyro. A little bit of a different tale for how these guys were able to get to their appearance here now and going into the next major. Yeah, this was no sprint getting here. This was a journey. This was a marathon. This team comprised of Rettles, AJ, and Magic Bear. Definitely raised some eyebrows starting into this. People knew that Rettles and AJ were going to team together. Uh, that whole summer off season, they were playing twos on twos on twos. And they were like, all right, Rettles and AJ, I, li I like this team. Who's the third? And it's Magic Bear. And you know what? That first split fast, they had a long way to come from since then. Even the first couple regionals in winter split towards the bottom of the top 16. Nothing really formulating to be the best of optic that was yet to come. But this spring split, I mean, can we just say that the fruits of the labor can be seen? An incredible performance to not only qualify for this Boston major, but make for one of the most exciting regionals at the end of the spring split. I mean, one of the most exciting regionals, one of the most exciting series of all time. FaZe got reverse swept by Optic in lower bracket. I want to say quarterfinals, if I'm not mistaken. Either way, the way that it basically worked out is that if Optic did not beat FaZe, out of the running. We're not making the major. Didn't have a chance anymore. And if phase one, they would stay in the running. I don't think they guaranteed themselves a spot, but more or less a spot for the major. And when Optic went down 0-3, and it wasn't just down 0-3, but really 0-19, the team outside of day ones of RLCS had lost 19 straight games to the top of the upper echelon of North America. It was looking like this was the most dire of straights for these guys. There was no chance of them making the major, no chance of them making worlds. Pretty much everything kind of went out the window. And then they reverse swept phase. And it created what is basically the most hot and just up-and-coming story in all of Rocket League right now. This is a team going into this next major here in the spring split in Boston that really have to prove themselves. Because like you said, despite the fact that they started off the year not great and now have started to turn around their results, job's not done yet. This team is very good. This team has proven themselves to be fantastic. But the issue is, is they're also currently sitting ninth overall in points. They need to more or less, I would say make seventh here. Actually, it might be eighth overall in points. I do have the list brought up right now, and unfortunately, it's uh, all over the place. Again, numbers have been just kind of up and down as teams over and over again are just flip-flopping here with crazy results. But yes, sure, eighth sure. overall in points right now. In order to make the World Championship, the way that it works is it's based off of how well the teams do at events. We explained this in the last Carmen Court video, as well as also a couple others prior. But... You need to be able to do well overall in points, as well as also make sure that your region overall does well in points, because you get a certain amount of spots at the World Championship just bypassing the wildcard stage, which is the sort of bid-in stage. And Optic right now aren't even guaranteed for the bid-in stage, not even guaranteed for the wildcard right now, because North America currently stands with four spots, meaning you get four teams, automatically go through the World Championship. You get three spots at wildcard, that number can't fluctuate, no matter what, it will be three but that's only seven total. And with Optics sitting in eighth overall right now and still a couple points behind version one, if they want to make it to the world championship, they quite literally need to not only have a good major, they need to outdo Furia, who are currently sitting in seventh and can take that spot straight from them. Pyro, again, oh. fantastic job out of Optics so far. They are by yeah. far in their best form. They still got a lot to go, though. They have a lot to do. Trying to beat out Furia, who just won the last regional, is going to be incredibly difficult. Um, but you know what? Optic Gaming not only trying to represent and boost NA to the World Championship, they're, they're representing Americans, too. Yep. Uh, Americans are no longer the uh, most represented at the major coming up in Boston. Only seven players in Space... Uh, excuse me, Optic Gaming make up three of those. Space Station Gaming make up another three. The point is that they're representing NA, 
And I want to talk about the players. I want to talk about this team. What put them in this position as well? Mm -hmm. When you look at players like Rettles, I feel like they represent, he, he represents like the heart of Rocket League in, in, in so many ways. Like uh, Rettles making that initial run with the peeps to seeing him uh, excel in space station gaming and kind of act like an older brother to Daniel when he made his uh, RLCS and land debut. And now the story of Rettles overcoming that reverse sweep against phase and the way everyone watched the comms video of how Rettles was inspiring the team and keeping motivation and, and belief that the team could truly win high I, I love the story that Rettles is riding here AJ to me is the, the primary striker on this team maybe the primary striker of North America could even be of the event if we really see optics show up but what makes this team really show up Opti of Optic Gaming? Because I left out one player who, even with Rettles and AJ making up a lot of the conversation, could still steer the conversation even more influentially. And you got to feed the bear. Magic Bear really been one of the biggest players to make an impact here on this season. Magic had been in RLCS for a couple of seasons prior, but I think the big thing is it's the first time he's really at a major contending team, one of the best teams on the planet. Before, he had been somewhat middle of the pack with Torrent or Alpine, a rebranded team that had been in RLCS for a decent amount of time, but he never made enough of a splash for people to think that, okay, let's put him on one of the top rosters in North America. So when Rettles and AJ made that risk with him, it was under a lot of scrutiny. And again, it was kind of fair as well. The criticisms did not stop in the fall uh, in the fall split when the team failed to make a major. The best results they had the entire split were top eight. Kind of a little bit less, you know, a little bit silenced in the winter split where they were able to at least get a top four and find themselves a solid result. But overall, he's been really the sort of under a magnifying glass throughout the entire year. But finally here in the split, like you said, he's starting to get his deserved credit. Feed the Bear Band for a reason. They continue to give him passes after pass out of midfield, and he does incredible things with it on offense. He really has been that sort of spark plug for the entire offense to kind of fuel themselves off of and get the ignition from. In comparison to, I think, Reddles and AJ, they've taken a little bit more of a backseat role when it comes to the scoring. I don't think it's actually necessarily fair for me to say that AJ hasn't been a scoring monster. He's been one of the most impressive offensive players throughout the entire split. But it's going to show you that this this team finally has chemistry. This team finally has rotations down lock pad, and they just look like an overall good team, whereas before it looked like three kind of disjointed players kind of playing ranked or six bands. So it's different. It feels better now. It feels real. I think the issue is, like we said, is that the expectations are very high for this team because they have to get those expectations. If they don't finish solid enough overall for North America, we lose out on spots as a region. If they don't right. f finish solid enough overall for themselves, they could miss out on the World Championship. So, I don't really know where to place Optic going into this one, Pyro. Mm. Part of me wants to say that this team's going to do incredibly well, it's going to exceed all expectations. The other part of me looks at the inconsistency of this team throughout the year, and I don't really know how to feel. I want to say I see Optic going top 8. Another part of me goes, Optic might just go out 0-2. I really don't yeah. know what to expect. With a double elimination format at Boston, you you how can you know what to expect? It's two and done. That's how it goes. Listen, we had the same conversation last week when we talked about Space Station Gaming, nope. and they're the number one seed going in from North America. So I think it's fair to have these doubts and the, these criticisms for Optic Gaming because although the journey has trended upwards for the performance of this team, th this is true. What Bass is saying is totally true. It's not a said and done conclusion until they show up in Boston, right? This is not only a test of these players themselves, but also a big question at RLCS in general. Should these, you know, long-term veteran yep. pro players be trusting in a new third and trusting the process? That's what we hear from Reynolds all the time. Trust the process. Trust it because they've gotten this far now through the whole season. But it only really matters if they can perform well at Boston and perform well at the world championship if they get their best. So I think we, we talk about the strengths of this team, three solid players that are finally working with those good rotations. Of course, criticisms could be though, when those moments of inconsistency flare up again, because it, it's hard to break old habits. It, it's hard not to remember how that first split went during this season and seeing players like magic bear, just fall out of those rotations or not make the play that's needed. So they just got to show up. They got to perform on a very difficult international stage. I think the reality is, is that it's not going to be an easy path no matter what. It's actually so difficult of a path. There's a world where they actually match up against Furia, their direct competition right now in round two of the event. 
Brackets are not forgiving, and I don't think neither will any of the teams there. For those that do want to watch, this is actually coming up next week, starting on July 6th in Boston, Massachusetts, will be when the major comes up here for Rocket League. So, look, we can theorize all we want here, Pyro, but the reality is, is Optic need to show up. Like we said, we've set the groundwork. This is a team that has the potential to, but if they do not, unfortunately, it will be them sealing their own fate. So... Pay attention closely. We got a really exciting major upcoming here, but uh, we don't really have much else to talk about today. We'll probably be tuning in with you guys next week, giving a little bit more conclusions to the uh, to the major, or maybe even maybe concluding it afterwards. We'll have to find out. But otherwise, we appreciate you guys tuning in. This has been the Esports.net Rocket League Show. My name has been Oliver Bass, joined alongside by Pyro J. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.